Okay, for unit 11, we're gonna be working with surface area, volume of 3D figures, and part of that is gonna require that we have this background knowledge and this understanding of the area of some 2D figures. So I've labeled this unit, or the, I'm sorry, this lesson 11-0, and that's because there's sort of this prerequisite that we have to know well enough and understand well enough if we're going to um, hope to do well with the future computation with volume and surface area, etc. Because um, part of that work requires us to know the area of the base of our solid. So if our base is a circle, like in a cylinder, or if our base is a triangle, like in a triangular uh, prism or pyramid, we would need to know how to find the area of that base. And so even though a lot of this is going to feel like a review, we're doing kind of the high school version of this elementary work, and so it's going to include Pythagorean theorem, simple stratical form, special right triangles, etc. So the goal is to determine the area of a polygon or a circle. That's the goal, that's the punchline, and in order to do that, we're going to need to know some things. And so these are things that you should hopefully already know, with the exception of the regular polygon. Um, the area of a parallelogram is just the base times the height. The triangle is one half times the base times the height, because every triangle is just half of a parallelogram. The area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases times the height, and uh, or you can think of it as two separate triangles, one half base one times the height and one half base two times the height, those two triangles added together. The regular polygon will sort of explain where that logic comes from. The circle we know is pi r squared, circumference, Pythagorean theorem, special right triangles, these are things that you ought to know. There might be some situations where we might use sine, cosine, tangent, but we're not going to be approximating values here. We're going to be trying to do our best to find the exact values for the areas of these figures. And so knowing these formulas is going, going to be expected. If we don't know these relationships, then it makes our work more difficult than it needs to be. All right, so first of all, we talk about how a, uh, a parallelogram's area is found by taking base times height. Well, base doesn't always mean bottom. A base in a polygon could be any of its sides, and then the height is that perpendicular distance between the parallel bases, all right? And so when we're thinking in terms of a polygon, if we, even if we have a triangle, then a, a base could be any of the triangle sides. It doesn't have to be the bottom, because if you turn the picture, now the bottom isn't the bottom anymore. You have a new bottom. So we want to make sure that we understand what altitude means, how to draw it, how to find its length, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and take a look at these situations. Here, I have a base being the bottom, and then the perpendicular distance being four. Now, I could use four and a half as my, my base, and then I could use whatever this perpendicular distance is from the, vert, the opposite side, the opposite vertex, to the plane containing this, um, this other side. So we want to make sure that we can, we can kind of think, if this is my base, then this would be the corresponding height. If this is my base, then this is the corresponding height. We want to be able to differentiate which, sa which side we're using as our base and then, of course, what the corresponding height is. Because if I use this as my base, then this is not the perpendicular distance between these parallel sides. And so that obviously is going to change the way that we do things. But in this case, again, nothing super crazy. The area is the base times the height and the area is always measured in squared units. All right, so we write the units and then we put the little squared symbol. Over here, the base, I'm gonna write the formula down. That's an expectation in this lesson and in this unit that you can do that computation. Write the formula down so that you know what that formula is. You wanna make sure that you know that formula by the time that we do our exam. Obviously, you should know those formulas, just like you probably wrote them 100 times in fourth and fifth grade. We're going to write them 100 times here in this class. All right, so that was parallelograms. Here are triangles. And so triangles, we talked a lot last unit about how if we have perpendicular sides, those can be our base and our height. And it doesn't really matter if I draw this triangle that way, and I have 5 here, 12 here, 13 there, I could do 1 half of 5 times 12, or I can do 1 half of 12 times 5, either way I'm going to be getting the same answer. And so again, the reason why it's half is because every single triangle is half of a parallelogram. 
All right, every triangle is half of its related parallelogram. So if I can find the base and I can find the height, then I can get the area squared. All right, and again, if I did half of five times 12, I'm still gonna end up with 30, but it still works out. Over here, I have the base is 10. Whoops, let's write the formula down. The height is 6.4, so I'm gonna get 32 square feet. Our job of being able to compute these areas is um, hopefully, for the most part, gonna be very easy work, light work for us to do. But there are obviously gonna be more challenging scenarios. And so here, I've got a lot of examples of, with triangles. We found the areas of isosceles triangles in our last unit. Um, and we tried to focus on special right triangles just to kind of shore up our understanding of that content. But here, we're gonna understand that when I draw that H, that altitude there, it's gonna cut this triangle into two congruent parts into a 10 and a 10. So the question is, what is that height? Well, here, in order to find the height, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of 10 squared plus H squared is equal to 12 squared. And so this becomes, obviously, not anything fancy, not anything too terribly difficult, but it is work that otherwise we haven't had to do yet. All right, so we get the square root of four and the square root of 11. We get that the height is two square roots of 11 meters. All right, so I have to do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem work before I actually do the area of the triangle work. And so the whole base here is 20. The height is two times the square root of 11. And so we end up with 20 times the square root of 11, whoops, square meters. Over here, if I wanna find the area, I need to know what the height is, what that perpendicular distance. So I get to do Pythagorean theorem, a squared and b squared makes c squared. I've got seven squared plus h squared is equal to the square root of 53 squared. I want for you to finish this. All right, what is the square root of 53 squared? I'm sure that you can solve that. I'm sure you can probably do it in your head. But if you need to use a calculator, go ahead and use a calculator. So here's a couple situations where we use the Pythagorean theorem to help us do that work. For E and F, you're gonna notice that we have some special right triangles. We have a 45, 45, 90, we have a 30, 60, 90. And so I know that I can figure out what the heights of the triangle, we know that these are gonna be the same, this is gonna be the length of the leg. The hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg times the square root of two. So 16 is equal to x times the square root of two. We're gonna solve that equation by dividing both sides by the square root of two. And so we get 16 over the square root of two is equal to x. But in order to have an actual value to work with, we have to rationalize that denominator. This is why we rationalize denominators, because it makes doing our work a whole lot easier. All right, this gives us eight times the square root of two um, and there's no units on this one, so that actually works out pretty nicely. The area of the triangle is one half the base times the height. The base and the, base and the height are the same. So I want for you to finish. And then we'll talk about that in class. And you finish this. All right, we got an eight square root two, and we got another eight square root two. Can you handle that work, this algebra one multiplication? Over here, we've got the short leg is two, so that means our long leg is two times the square root of three. The area is one half times the base times the height. We're writing the formula down, even though it's easy work, we're still gonna write it down. We get the area is two squared to three, whatever the units are squared. All right, we don't have the units, so I'm not gonna write units squared. I just don't think that that's worth my time. Um, but if we had like meters or inches or whatever else, then we would use the appropriate units and have them squared. So you need to finish 2E, you're gonna finish 2D, and we're gonna work from there. All right, moving on. We're still kind of doing review, right? This is, we're couching old content in terms of new knowledge, and so we're gonna use that accordingly. Here, the area of this trapezoid is basically the area of these two triangles added together, all right? We have this base times the same perpendicular distance, all right, between that vertex, right, and the opposite side. We've got this base and that height. You can find them separately if you want to, but this is our magical, magical formula. I'm just explaining why that is true. This perpendicular distance is the same as that perpendicular distance here. So if I make this into a rectangle, I know that I cut this into 20 and 16. That might be useful for some of the work that we're gonna do over there. But for here, if I know what this base is and that base is, I can just plug these numbers into our formula. So again, the area is equal to the average of 
base one and base two times the height. And one half times 36 and 20 times the height of 18. We get to do this work. We get half of uh, 56 times 18. That's going to be 56 times 9, which is going to be 560 minus 56. And so it's going to be 504. Let's just double check that, see if I mess it up. Um, let's use a calculator. <laughs> I might want to screw that up. So 1 divided by 2 times 36 plus 20 times 18. And we get 504. Yay! 504, again, square inches. Let your calculator do that work, right? If you skip this step, that's fine. Formula, plug in the numbers, get the answer. Formula, plug in the numbers. Oops, I don't know the height. Is the height 13? No, it's not 13. We need to figure out what the height is. If this is 13, if I draw this perpendicular, this becomes 11 and 5. By the Pythagorean theorem, I know this is going to be 12. I could use the Pythagorean theorem to find that using a squared and b squared makes c squared. So I know that that's going to be 12. Just trust me on that um, or do that work to confirm that it's actually going to be 12. Here we had to do Pythagorean theorem to know what the height is so that we could execute the operation there. Half of um, 12 is 6. 6 times 27 is going to be 2 times 81 which is 162 square feet. All right, let's see how you did on that one. Hopefully, well. Still dealing with trapezoids, all right? There's a hundred of these examples, but what we're gonna be doing is obviously we're trying to make this as accessible as possible. Now, you can draw in and make this rectangle and recognize that that's five and that's five and that's five and this is 10. You can fill in all those gaps using properties of these parallelograms. This rectangle here, we're going to know that if this is 7, then this is 7, which means that that part's 4, right? Because 7 and 4 have to add up to this whole base is 11. If I know that the short leg is 4, I know that the long leg is 4 times the square root of 3. So that's the height of this trapezoid, that the, the perpendicular distance between the parallel bases. So again, once we have that, then we get to do the work to find out what the area is. The hard part on this isn't finding the area. It's finding all the parts and pieces. And so, again, you could find the area of this triangle and this rectangle and this triangle and you could add them all together. You can find the area of this rectangle and this triangle and add them together. But if we have the formula, why would we not use it? The whole base here is going to be 20. The base there is 10. The height is 5. All right? Half of 30 is 15. 15 times 5 is 75. All right, over here, half of these 11 and 7 adds up to 18, so half of 18 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36 times the square root of 3 is 36 times the square root of 3 square centimeters. All right, let your calculator do that work. Let your brain do that work. Do that computation. If you have the formula, you plug in the numbers, you're going to get the answer. You're, you're going to. Um, but sometimes you have to find the numbers, and that might be a challenge. All right, here is the new part. So put a little star by this in the notes because this is going to be new. All the other formula work that we've done has been old news or it's been maybe the high school version of that old news. So again, hopefully nothing super fancy. Regular polygons have a little bit of anatomy to them. The radius of a regular polygon is the segment that goes from the center of that polygon to one of the vertices. All right, it's the center of a circle that um, inscribes that or is circumscribed about that polygon. The apothem is how we say that, apothem. Say it real quick, apothem, apothem. Say it one more time, apothem. It is not apothem, all right? It's apothem. The emphasis is on the first syllable, apothem. Um, the apothem is the segment that goes from the center to the center of a side, all right? It cuts that side in half. We've done some of that work in our circles unit, all right? Working with some of our, of our polygons. So here, if we're to draw this picture, we would have, this would be a radius, this would be a radius, this would be a radius, this would be a radius. From here to the corner is a radius. From here to the corner is a radius. That's a radius. For every one of those, that's the radius. All right, but there is a segment that connects the center to the side. It cuts the side in half, and that's your apothem. All right, it goes to the center of a side, and it cuts that side in half. That's your apothem. 
It goes to the center of a side, cutting it in half at right angles. That's your apothem. All right, it goes to the center of a side. It makes right angles. It cuts that part in half. That's your apothem. So we need to be able to find a relationship between the apothem, the side length, the radius, because sometimes we're given one piece of information and not the other, and so we have to do our math, right? We've got to figure out how we're going to handle this. Here is what we are going to focus on in this unit. We're going to focus on this and this and this. And the reason for us to focus on these particular figures, the regular triangle, the regular quadrilateral, and the regular hexagon, is because this will give us some special right triangles so that we don't have to use trigonometry. Otherwise, with these figures, we'd have to do trig. All right, we'd have to do trig here, here, and here. Otherwise, we're gonna do special right triangles for here, here, and there, all right? And so we wanna be able to use our special right triangles. And the reason why we get to use special right triangles is because we know that each of these angles is 60 degrees. We know that each of these is 90 degrees. We know that each of these is 120 degrees. And so when we draw in the radius, it cuts that into 60 and 60. It cuts this into 45 and 45. It cuts this into 30 degrees and 30 degrees. And that's important to note, all right? Furthermore, there's some other awesome stuff that's happening here. Um, namely, uh, that when we draw in radius with apothem, you know, we've got some, with, with the radius, we've got isosceles triangles, and that's awesome. We can use those isosceles triangles. But most likely what we're gonna do is draw a radius and the apothem and have a side, and then that gives us a 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90 is one of these, but we've got two of them. There's a lot happening here. The final thing to note is the central angles, all right? Just like we had central angles in a circle, if I have a circle around this, the measure of this angle is the measure of this arc, right? And so that central angle is one third of the way around the whole circle, because there's three of these. So I know that this is going to be 360 divided by three. This is gonna be 120 degrees. I know that if I draw my radii, all right, that each one of these is gonna be 360 divided by four. I know that if I draw each of my radii in here, I'm gonna have 360 divided by six. So that's how I know that each one of those is gonna be 60 degrees in the central angles. We're still gonna be using that same logic from last unit. All right, so here we have different situations and I've made different segments 12 units long or 12 inches long. This is the last bit and this is, I know it's a long video. All right, but on this, if I give you the side length or the apothem or the radius, we should be able to find the area of this regular hexagon. Um, and so different situations, based on what we are given, we want to be able to do that work and we want to do it well. And so what we're going to have to do is understand that every one of these is broken into triangles. All right. And if we break them into these triangles, we're going to notice that these triangles are equilateral. All right. That's really important for us to understand that in the regular hexagon, when we cut that hexagon into triangles, all those triangles are equilateral triangles. When we have a square and we cut the cut it into its triangles those are 45 45 90s all right when we have a triangle and we cut that into its triangles with each of those radii it's isosceles but it's 120 degrees all right so when i draw the apothem here from the center to the side it cuts that 12 in half into six and six i know that this was a 60 degree angle and i know that i just cut that 60 degree angle in half so this is a 30 60 90 triangle which means that this segment right here is six times the square root of three all right if i know the apothem all right that distance from the center to the side that's our apothem if i know my side length then i know the perimeter all right i know my perimeter now the reason why this formula works though let me explain that is because we have basically um six of these triangles so let's try to understand this the area is six of these triangles. So I have six times one half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. The thing is that the base of this triangle is one of the sides, right? And the height of the triangle is the apothem. And so if I were to change the order of these things that are all being multiplied, I would have one half times A times six times S. Now this right here, six times the length of the side is six times there's six sides, right? Six sides times however many there are. This is our perimeter. 
So our formula is one half apothem times perimeter. Our job is to maybe not compute all that separately, but just to understand if I know the side length, then I know the perimeter, right? Because all the sides are the same. So area is one half apothem times perimeter. Let's go ahead and do that work here. Area is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Area is one half times the apothem, six squared to three, times the perimeter, six times 12. When we type all that in our calculator, everything but the radical, we're gonna do our multiplication of everything. We don't have another square root of three, um, and it's not a square root that I can take, so we're gonna multiply all of these things. Six times six is 36, 36 times 12, and then divide by two. So really what we have is half of 12 is six times six times six. That's 216 square root of three square inches. All right, that's the area for number one. Now the area for number two, things are a little bit different. Actually, let's do number let's do number three, and then we'll go back and do this one. Here, if I know that this is 12, I know that this is 12. And when I draw in my apothem, which I need, it's gonna help me do the thing. If this is the hypotenuse, then I know that this is half as big as the hypotenuse. I know that that is the same. And I know that this is six squared to three. This is the same as A. Can you do that? given this information, can you do this given that information? All right, so this ends up being the same, but we're gonna cut that in half, all right? That times square root of three gives us the apothem, and then we get to work from there. I'm not gonna work that one out, because you can work that out if you need to. Here, the area, again, is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. We know the apothem is 12, we don't know the perimeter. Womp womp. So if the apothem is 12, then I need to know what this amount is right here. I'm gonna call this X, or maybe I can call it S for our short leg. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it x. So the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of three. So 12 is equal to x times the square root of three, which means that 12 divided by the square root of three is equal to x. I have to rationalize this denominator. It's not gonna be fun, but we're gonna multiply by the square root of three over square root of three, doing our algebra one. Find out that x is 12 square roots of three over three. So x is four square roots of three. That is the length of this segment right here. All right, so this segment is, and let me write it in a color that we can see very well. This is four times the square root of three, which means that this part is also four times the square root of three, which means that a full side is eight times the square root of three. If I take four square roots of three and I add four square roots of three, I get a total of eight square roots of three. So that's a side length. I've got six of those sides. So I've got six times those eight square roots of three. All right, this is gonna give me uh, 12, uh, let's see, half of 12 is six, six times six is 36, 36 times eight, I can't do it on my calculator. I mean, I probably could if I tried real hard, but that's gonna give me 288 square root three square inches. All right, so obviously different situations and different thinking that you have to go through there. This is a hard part, and I do wanna talk about this more in class, specifically if you have specific questions, but if your questions are centered around the Pythagorean, I'm sorry, not the Pythagorean theorem, but special right triangles, then there's a simple solution for that. And that is practice those special right triangles, ask meaningful questions. I will work on those special right triangles with you, or we can just resign ourselves to doing Pythagorean theorem. All right, know these formulas so that you can do your things.